I am Ronja James, and this is What's Happening in Black Art Today. Well, in terms of when I started drawing or starting artwork in general, it was about the age of four. I was in preschool class, and they were we were doing some type of uh, class project. I think it was around Black History time, and they gave me some Martin Luther King uh, drawing, and I was one of the few um, preschools that stayed within the lines, and they kind of commented on it. And I guess from that early age, that's when I first got a compliment that you know maybe uh, consider you know working more. Speed ahead towards high school. I started I really started getting into the different elements of pastel drawing, figurative drawing, perspectives, and then when I got into college, that's when I really got into the painting aspect of graphic design. Painting was by accident. I was I was actually trying to get a web design class, but most of the design class were filled, and the only I needed to fill out my electives, and painting happened to be there. I wasn't really trying to get into painting, and. It happened to be oil painting. And my very first critique, it was brutal, because I had no idea what I was doing. My uh, professor, I think it was Professor Gelman at the time, she told me, uh, this is the first time you did this. I said, yeah, and she said, you gotta do a lot better. So, <laughs> from the next, uh, I guess from the first, the next critique, it was a dramatic improvement, because after class, I stayed after, went to the libraries and did research on artists that like, uh, mostly like the Rembrandts, Vermeer, Van Dyke's, they were in the 16th century Baroque period. That was what you call the genius element during that period. And from that point on, I started focusing on their work and other master uh, portrait artists like Caravaggio, I think it is. And I also got into Henry O. Tanner. And some of the contemporary artists I like are uh, you see Kevin A. Williams and I like uh, Kadir Nelson. Those are the ones that, I, that really inspire me to uh, improve on my aspects. And I'm also appreciative of the abstract artists and uh, the different ways they approach their work, whether it be representational or non-representational. In terms of how the solo show got started, uh, the DMV Art League founder, Keanu Clark, she inspired me to think about doing a solo show. And honestly, I haven't had a solo show probably since probably 2002, 2003 at the uh, Grenada, uh, Grenada uh, Embassy, this in DC. And that was a one person show and it was like a couple of paintings, but nothing as huge as when the DMV RG was doing. So I gotta thank Keanu Clark. My solo show will be at the Gateway Media Art Lab, 3311 Rhode Island Avenue in Mount Rainier, Maryland, sponsored by the DMV Art Lab. The theme of my show is Now and Forever. I basically want to do a dedication to all the iconic figures that either are currently living or are now eternal. For example, Bernie Mac, I have a little bit of Nina Simone, I have a uh, Len Vise, and the current uh, legendary figures, I have Serena, I have Taraji P. Henson, and uh, let's see, I probably have a few more. Actually, I did two Nina Simone paintings. I have a, uh, let's see, I have a Jimi Hendrix. I also have an Angela um, Bassett uh, painting. And I have a couple of other paintings that uh, deal with a book I wrote called Pecan's First Day of School and Pecan's Spelling Bee Championship. I, I will most likely be doing more paintings based off the book that I did uh, this year and a couple of books I have in, in the coming future related to the Pecan series. The, the last two would be Class President and the other one would be uh, uh, Pecan's Field Day. In terms of Pecan, what I would love for the readers to get out of Pecan is Pecan is just like a regular kid going through you know, daily troubles of young students from second to fifth grade. You know, when you're younger, you always try to make friends, you're trying to fit in, and you also try to do good in school, and you learn 
different uh, new things, whether it be new math, uh, English, spelling, just interacting with kids and not just uh, fitting in, but also looking looking cool. As a young kid, you're trying to, you're, you're in the process of growing into adult and along the way you're going to have uh, your ups and downs and you just have to learn to you know, deal with it the best way possible in a kid's way. If the world ends in today and only one piece represents how what my work is, it would probably be a Burning Mac piece behind me. If you see over there, I would say because of the uh, detail I did, Burning Mac's face and also his expression, he had an energetic personality and I wanted to capture that. And then different colors I use. If you if you deal with dark skinned people like myself, we need we have a, a beautiful array of different colors, and I try to uh, and put that into his uh, features. And very not too far behind, I'll probably use the serene one. That's the one I have the most fun in because you rarely see the lady athlete athletes being presented in a in a very sexy, athletic way, and Serena embodies not just uh, her professionalism, but athleticism and a, a rich uh, dedication in terms of taking, um, you know, being, uh, how can I put this? She's been dedicated in playing tennis and her professionalist level, it, 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 trans, um, it transforms in all elements of life. Whether you, whatever profession you are, you always want to be the best, and Serena embodies that, in my personal opinion. Generally, I usually take four to six weeks for, for pain, but it really depends on how into the pain I am. If it's like a Burning Mac piece, it could go probably six to eight weeks. And technically, an artist is never finished, we just have to pick a point to stop. In terms of my technique, I assume every artist has a go-to color. My top two would probably be burgundy and purple. I use purple for the base to start off the actual painting. And from that point on, I use the purple just to get an outline of the actual figure. And once I'm totally satisfied with purple, I start into the painting. In terms of the brush strokes, depending on the subject, if a person is more I would say aggressive, I would probably use choppy brush strokes if they're more smooth. I would probably go back and smooth out the painting to make it less, you know, sort of like an, almost like a soft um, skin tone. And depending, also depends on the mood I'm in. It really depends if I'm really feeling the subject, I really go into it, I'll get very fine detail, the little brush strokes, little dots here and there. And if I'm just in a very late, not necessarily late, but more rapid, rapid movement, like for example, for example, if I'm doing like a jazz and musician like a Miles Davis or Coltrane, I would have rapid brush strokes. You would see a lot more brush strokes on, on mostly jazz people. Now, I did a Miles Davis piece that was highly detailed because I wanted to capture his intense look and I used so many dark skin tones, like a purple, like a dark, uh, Burgundy and a little bit of blue here and there, and that's also a reflection to where you were sitting. Because when you're even doing a something, when you're doing a figurative painting, you have to capture all the elements around it. Whether it be uh, if they're leaning against a couch, you have to uh, capture the color of the couch a little bit because it's, you know, a person usually reflects off that, or the type of light if they have a bright white light, you try to capture that on their nose, eyes, and different elements like that. That's pretty much on my little technique. Most of my income, I do a lot of uh, graphic design for other people, whether it be uh, uh, authors who need cover designs or people who do uh, book illustrating or children's books. I also do administrative work, so it's like a combination of different things. And let's see. And I also do my own uh, children's books. I write it out, I do the artwork, I do the printing. When I don't do the printing, I just do the artwork, I have somebody that's the editing. And it also saves money if you're able to do many different things besides oil painting, whether it be, uh, I have to do graphic design and I have a long drawing and book layout. So and when an artist is able to do a lot of different uh, things, they're able to be well 
numbers and you know, the time that's in it, the time um, that's spent on dealing with the money. I would say one of my favorite moments as an artist occurred probably 10 years ago when I was in Baltimore for an art event at Longford. It was my, one of my first uh, big events. And uh, Bernice Stannis, a.k.a. Thelma, she was uh, doing her first book. I forgot the name of the book. And she was uh, doing a presentation. And I was in the way back, and I had one of my drawings of uh, Ms. Stannis. And when I entered the, when I was setting up for the event, I actually showed one of the security people the drawing I did. And for whatever reason, uh, they came running to me because she was about to split. And I, I heard about it. Well, actually, they came over and they pulled me over and said, you better go and get because you're about to run. So I ran with the drawing and almost tripped. But I kept on going and I caught her and her mom um, that was there and I showed her the drawing I did and she wanted to take photos. And she wanted to know where my booth was and where my artwork. So I, she said she was going to stop by and she uh, stopped by my booth, looked at my artwork and she took a picture with me and my mom uh, who was like, helping me at the time. So that's probably my favorite moment. During my downtime when I'm not painting, I love to go to LA Fitness. I like to work out. I also like to play tennis, a little bit of basketball, and sometimes I do some hiking. Well, rarely hiking, to be honest, but more like tennis and basketball. And they usually have outdoor concerts or you know jazz clubs, whether it be downtown Silver Spring or downtown DC along the mall. I also love to go to museums like the African American uh, Museum. I love the National Gallery of Art. Uh, American History and Air and Space Museum, those are the ones I like to go to the most. Besides, uh, besides having the, my art show at Gateway Media Art Lab, I've also had it at, let's see, Raw, a event called Raw Artists. It's a national art exhibition. They have a, a version in DC at the Howard Theater. I've done that a few times. I've also done the Raw Artists in Philadelphia. I may do one in Atlanta. Let's see, I've done the art, Artscape. No, I did Automatic. I've done Automatic probably five or six different years. Now, in terms of the Brad Pitt piece, I've been listening to women in terms of what they think of Brad Pitt and how sexy and the way he has a, how can I put this, a rough, confident look but it's sexy so I try to find an image that best represented it or an image that can actually bring that out and I, I try to capture his expression because to me he seemed to be very shy not painfully shy but but he has a little confidence that he kind of you know comes out into how he you know takes a picture and it, he seemed to be flirting with the uh, camera I'm thinking maybe most actors probably do that, but Brad Pitt has a way of um, flirting with the camera, like Prince used to do. He had, he had a way of kind of flirt with the person, whoever it is you're viewing, as if they're trying to make a move on him. So I try to bring that out at Brad Pitt. And I had fun actually creating his hair, because he has a rough way in terms of the, the way he does his hair. It doesn't look like it's smooth, but it, for whatever reason, it seems to work well with him. I mean, that's basically what Brad Pitt is. He's confident who he is. It doesn't matter how he looks. He can dress whatever way and women will fall all over him. So I'm trying to bring that element to how I um, did a portrait of him. And let's see, I'm hoping, to do, I'm hoping to do a real big event in Atlanta. It's part of the Harlem Fire Show, but the real big one is the 10th anniversary one that's coming this February. It's got the historic Riverside Church in Harlem from February 14th and 17th. I'll be a part of a lot of amazing artists. I'll have a booth there. And so if you're up in Harlem, New York, doing the 14th and 17th at the historic Riverside Church, please come and check me out and support. I'll have originals, prints, and I'll also have children's books and small prints.